May it please the court. My name is Julie McNeil, here for Shirley Wayside Limited Partnership. Wayside applied for a special permit to expand its uh, pre-existing non-conforming mobile home park in the town of Shirley. The board voted unanimously to deny it, um, went to the land court. Uh, after trial, it was determined that, um, that the, the land court directed the board to issue the special permit, then null the decision. Um, town appealed, the board appealed to the appeals court, which, which reversed that decision and the SJC um, granted further appellate review to Shirley Wayside. Um, under Chapter 40A, Section 6, there is an allowance for expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming use. Upon a finding that such extension shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists. But, but you also have to deal with the, with the issue of that it also doesn't amendments to the zoning bylaw would apply, correct? Absolutely, Your Honor. And here, there were no um, area or dimensional requirements that, that govern mobile home parks in the zoning bylaw. But, but if you, I mean, isn't the, isn't the town's uh, uh, or the argument that there are, once you, th th that it's in districts that have setback requirements and other requirements that this doesn't meet? And why don't those apply? They don't apply because they apply to single-family homes. Where this is a pre-existing non-conforming use, it takes it out of the realm of that. And, and it's, if it was single-family homes, absolutely, it would have to comply. And if there were any zoning regulations um, that govern mobile home parks in the zoning bylaw, it would have to comply. The only, the only section of the zoning bylaw that deals with mobile homes is Section 4 under special regulations. It has no area, dimensional, or... or um, density requirements that govern mobile homes. Where the mo mobile home parks are governed is properly within the Board of Health regulations. Chapter 140, Section 32B gives towns, town boards of health the authority to license mobile home parks. And as such, Shirley has adopted and promulgated regulations to govern their density. Wayside's expansion, the proposed expansion, will comply with all such requirements. That was determined, um, actually that was an agreed fact. That was also determined um, at the hearing level. Slow down. Explain that to me again. All lo this this re complies with all local requirements. Yes, it does, Your Honor. In what Department of Public Health regulations? For, in the Board of Health, yes, Your Honor. Board of Health. Yes. This complies with all Board of Health requirements. Yes, it does, Your Honor. So the only thing this is violative of is. What? It's it's actually not violative of the zoning bylaw. It works within the pre-existing non-conforming um, use part of the zoning bylaw. It's at Shirley's zoning bylaw 2.8.4, that's where it governs expansions of pre-existing non-conforming. They enjoy the protection offered under Chapter 40A, Section 6. What happened to make this non-conforming? Was it, was it pre, a previously permitted use under the zoning bylaw and the zoning bylaw was amended so that there's no longer any reference to uh, trailer parks? Absolutely, Your Honor. Um, as of 1985, the town of Shirley um, took out bylaw, uh, excuse me, took out mobile homes in, from their bylaw in all districts. So that under 40A Section 6, it has to be, if you're pre-existing non-conforming, that, that's why you are pre-existing and non-conforming because you existed prior to that. There was testimony at trial that um, from the uh, general partner of, of, Shirley, of Shirley Wayside um, that that, that the, mobile, the mobile home park had existed long before he bought it and for, for approximately 50 years at that uh, point. Can I ask you, as a pre-existing non-conforming use, use which is no longer permitted, do you have some sort of right to um, expand? Nobody, act, nobody has a right to expand. Nobody has a right to a special permit. However, there's a standard that's set out in 48 Section 6 and also in 2.8.4 of the Shirley Zoning Bylaw that says that you, you have certain requirements you must meet. Number one and number two are, are not even um, an issue on appeal here. Um, number three is, is whether or not you um, will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. And so and if you meet that burden, then you have a right to it. No, there again, the board, the board always retains discretion. However, the board cannot exercise, they have to exercise that discretion reasonably. And when this went to the land court, it, it found on every category before it, it was not re a reasonable exercise of that discretion. Well, why, why isn't it reasonable if the town long time ago, 25, 26 years ago, has, 
has barred any further mobile homes and is trying to develop a different mix of residences, why is it arbitrary and capricious that they wouldn't want an expansion of that use? Because they have the right, uh, they have the right to not allow expansions of any pre-existing non-conforming, whether it be mobile home or anything else that the town deems appropriately going through whatever um, uh, process that they have to do to amend their bylaw in order to not allow for it. In fact, many towns don't allow for expansion of pre-existing non-conforming. Shirley has a bylaw that is what is, has been classified as permissive in spirit in that it does allow such expansion, but you must meet their criteria. One is the 25% rule, it's a bright line test, it's not an issue on appeal. Another is that you have to be within um, the perimeter of your lot, you can't add new land in order to expand your non-conforming use. And, and as part of 48 section six, if there are anything, if, if there are any other bylaws that govern your particular use, you also have to um, comply with those. In Cox versus Carver, there was the, um, which is why, the case that the appeals court used to overturn the land court decision, Cox versus Carver had a bylaw that stated that a mobile home park must have 100 acres, and that applicant did not comply with that. So that's why their decision was overturned. Um, it, it, not only the substantial detriment that the board must look at, that the court must see if the board applied reasonably, but also if there are any other overriding bylaws with which uh, pre-existing non-conforming use must comply. Here, there are simply none. Um, as I was saying, the, in the Shirley zoning bylaw, under section four, which deals with special regulations, it does talk about mobile homes. It deals with it. It doesn't have any area, dimensional, or density requirements. In other special regulations under section four, such as hammer headlots, cluster development, um, they do deal with area or density requirements. So that is properly where it would be in the Shirley zoning bylaw, but it's not there and it's not anywhere well, Why would in there, there be a zoning bylaw if they've outlawed the use? Is what I'm trying to because, figure out. Well, there's still Why would there be a zoning bylaw governing all these little particulars when they said this is no longer permitted use? Right, absolutely. And that's and there again, that's where it brings it into the realm of pre existing non conforming. And where they do govern it, <coughs> govern area of mobile homes, and properly so, is in the Board of Health regulations. And and as I've said, surely Wayside's expansion will comply with those. Um, there must be 5,000 square feet, no less than 50 by 100. There's setback requirements, and Shirley's, Shirley's uh, Wayside's ex proposed expansion does comply with all of those. Let, 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 me, let me try that question a different way. Could the town put up a sign in front of town, right in the, in the middle of town hall with, with a, a steel anchor on it so nobody can move the sign? It says, don't even bother applying for a special permit to expand a non-conforming trailer park because we're, net, we're never going to allow it. Well, what if they put that kind of a sign up there? What would, in, in, your what Honor, would you I, say? I think they would still be held to, to what's in their bylaw, which does allow for this expansion. They would have to change the bylaw in order to not allow for any expansion of pre-existing non-conforming. In fact, um, that is what the town would have you believe. On page 15 of their brief, they say that any, any time that they act on a pre-existing non-conforming extension that's no longer allowed in the district, they can never be deemed to be irrational. That's like saying, we, we never have to allow this. Mm -hmm. And that, that just totally goes against the standard of the finding of you must be reasonable in finding that it shall not be substantially more detrimental. Yeah. I don't know the answer to this, uh, but would another answer to Justice Spina be that even if you didn't have 2.8.4, that because of uh, Section 6, the state statute, the town would, couldn't do what he said, or could they? They would still have to have, um, if, if, as long as they have that provision for extension, yes. No, no, say they wipe out. Oh, they wipe it out. They wipe out 2.8.4, but it seemed to me that um, uh, Section 6 um, <coughs> does, the statute says that you can do this as long as you meet certain criteria. So I, I, but it's also been found constitutional that the board, the, the, excuse me, the town can designate that we shall have no extensions of pre-existing non-conforming. Okay. That, None that's at all. okay. That's, that's okay. okay. Yeah. Even but, with but, six in place. Even with yes, six yep, in place. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. It's been, and it, that's in the opinion of the justice's opinion that I cited in my brief from 1920, when section, excuse me, chapter 40A was first promulgated. That yes, towns still have that control. But here, they, they, they have allowed for the expansion. I understand that. Yeah. Thank you. Now, going back to the zoning bylaw, it, it, 
does it define mobile home? I mean, is this a, truly a mobile home as opposed to a manufactured home? I think, I think one is the same as the other. Um, I think it's just a euphemism for a mobile home or a trailer, to tell you the truth. Um, in, in the um, Attorney General's regulations, they do refer to them as manufactured housing. I believe in the um, sec Chapter 140, Section 32B, but, they but the, also refer to them as... But there is such a thing as manufactured... I mean, you see them on trailers all the time, on, on flatbed trucks. They'll, they'll say, you know, they'll ship the house. and They're prefabricated homes. Is that the same thing? No, no, that's not the same thing. I think that would be more of a, of a single-family home or, or what have you. Um, I, don't, I don't think this would be truly a mobile home you know, being on, on, on What if wheels, they take the wheels out? If they remove the wheels and put it on cinder blocks, is that a mobile I, home? I think it has to do with the size as well, though I, I don't actually know the answer to that question, but I, but I know that, there, yeah, there is no definition, um, act, you know, that you have to have it on blocks or, or whatever the Attorney that, General that I'm aware of. The Attorney General doesn't have separate mobile home regulations. It's just manufactured home regulations? They call, it, they call it manufactured housing, yes. But the zoning law itself, or are you, are, you, are you telling us that this is plainly a mobile home and not a single family home under the under the zoning laws? Yes, well what it is is it's 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 expansion of the mobile home park that it's that it's a part of Shirley Wayside's mobile home park that it has these trailers on this land. Right, but the appeals court seemed to treat it as if it were a single family home and said it therefore <laughs> violated the zoning bylaws. Right, and that's and that's where I found that they that they made an error. Um, and they're in, in error because if one looks at the zoning bylaws, it is plain that this would not be within the definition of a single-family home. Yes, it's, it's not. It's not it, right. It's expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming mobile home park. Don't you think this isn't this case? But let's just say that the um, bylaw didn't have that perimeter requirement, and and you had facts a little. I'm sorry, bit. you said perimeter. In other words, the expansion didn't have to be within the perimeter. Okay. So sort of like the the. Uh, plaintiff in Carver, and, well, anyway, the, the mobile home yep. owners, um, uh, Shirley Wayside <clears throat> purchased, they wanted to, or they, they had, they wanted to use something outside that perimeter that was actually, and this is post allowing mobile homes, uh, so it's, it's right smack dab in the middle of a residential district. Then you would say the residential or would you? Would you say that the residential, um, the single-family home portions of the bylaw would apply to that? No, I'm not saying that they would apply. I'm saying that they wouldn't be able to do their expansion because it wouldn't meet that first criteria, meaning that it has to be within the perimeter. Yeah, that no, was another no, problem I, in Cox. Right. I, so, that, so, so, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so if we agree with you, what, what's the result? Do you, does it go back for, for further proceedings? Well, what, what happened at the land court was that they not only annulled the decision, but they took the further step and, and, and ordered the board to issue the special permit. And that is what I'd like to see reinstated, that, that, that this court would, would reinstate the decision of the land court and order the board to issue the special permit. Now, the land court also, I'm sorry, the appeals court made reference to the increase in density being arguably a reason that would permit the denial. Would that, I mean, is that not enough? Your Honor, it, it would be enough, but the, what they've done is they've taken two opportunities to regulate density. One is that they say if you are expanding a pre existing non conforming use, whatever it may be, you cannot be more than 25%. That was determined at the hearing level. It was also uh, reinstated by their only witness that appeared at trial was the um, building inspector and Board of Health, Me Board of Health member, Donald Farrer, Jr., who testified that, yes, they, 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 they are not over the 25 percent. So that's a so, bright line test. So you're saying this goes back to the bylaw, that the bylaw essentially allowed an increase in density of 25 percent because you cannot expand the perimeter. Right. Two, well, two things. The bylaw with the 25 percent, which the expansion meets and it's not an issue on appeal, and also going to the Board of Health regulations, um, which talk about mobile homes. That's, that's where it's located, where, where the regulations are, and, and the expansion will comply with that, and that, that's not an issue. Yeah. Everybody has agreed that that, that and What's Section 4? You've mentioned Section 4. Section 4 was the special regulations in the bylaw. Um, it, I mention it because it's the only place that talks about mobile homes at all, um, and it doesn't talk about area, density. It doesn't say it has to be set back a certain level. Um, but the other, um, and that's all cited in my brief as well, that's section 4.4. The, there's other sections of, of special regulations, um, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, I want to say, that talk about 
different area and dimensional requirements for those other types of special uses like hammered head lots and things like that. So if the town of Shirley wanted to put something in there with mobile homes, you know, I assume it would have to be consistent with what they have at the Board of Health. But like I've been saying, if they properly regulate board, uh, excuse me, mobile homes in their Board of Health regulations as by statute. Did, 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 uh, did questions of sewer, water, um, traffic, uh, did yep. that, is that all, was that all dealt with in the public health department regulations? No, actually, um, all of those, all of those and more were, were dealt with at the, um, at the hearing level here. At the um, Zoning Board of Appeals? Yes. And, and if what, I, what do they say on those issues? Uh, on all of, all of those issues, uh, traffic, dense, uh, excuse me, wetlands, um, impacts on the school system, the tax burden on the town, road maintenance, snow removal, trash removal, all of those um, require, all of those um, considerations were, were found by the board. They, they kind of threw them into the decision at the land court, which finds facts to Novo. It said no rational board could conclude the way this board concluded on every single one of those issues. Um, I do want to touch briefly on traffic. Um, where this wasn't an issue that the appeals court brought up. As I said, it's only density that the appeals court overturned the land court decision on. But with regard to traffic, um, they had, the board had said in their decision it's going to substantially increase the heavy amount of traffic already on the road. Well, at trial, um, our traffic expert testified that um, they did a traffic count. There were 434 cars found um, over a 24-hour period. And our tra traffic expert testified that a mobile home would increase that by 75 per day. The, 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 this this okay. expansion, the 15, would, would increase it by 75 cars per day. And uh, age 55 and over, which this is, would increase it by 60 per day. So, but in the town's brief, they do touch on traffic again to say that it's the board's consideration of the problem, not a court's, which is controlling. However, that's only where reasonable minds may differ as to whether or not something is a problem. If, if, if you go the higher number, the 75, that's only adding one additional car per 20 minutes. This was also found by every single person that looked at it that traffic is not an issue on Clark Road. Ms. Even the Ms. McNeil, your time is up. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, Good morning, Mr. Chief Justice, Hi. members of the court. Um, my name is Ellen Callahan Doucette, and I represent the Shirley Board of Appeals. Um, and what I, what I want to start with saying is, just to follow up with my sister's presentation, Section 4.4 .4 deals with mobile homes only in that if you have a house under construction, if you have a fire, you can move a mobile home onto it so you can live in it while you're fixing up your home or you're re, re, um, renovating or reconstructing your home. It's the only time a mobile home is allowed in the town of Shirley. In 1985, they amended the zoning bylaws to remove mobile home parks, and there's no evidence that at that time there was ever a distinction between manufactured housing and a mobile home. It was the use was, uh, uh, they may, it may now be called manufactured homes for politically correct purposes, I don't know. But what we, what we have is 65 units on 20 acres, that's what was approved, is one that's abandoned. The application is to add 15 units but remove the abandoned so you'll end up a net of um, six, 79 units on 20 acres, a portion of which is a pond. So it's a lawfully non-conforming, not lawfully pre-existing non-conforming use in that it was, when it was located there, it was permitted under the zoning bylaw. So it's going to go from how many to how many? 64 to 79? 60, well, the 65, one is abandoned. They're going to remove it, and they want to add 15 double wide. So it'll be 79 units total on 20 acres of land, which is in a, a residential district. So you, but you have a zoning bylaw. I, I don't know whether there's zoning bylaws or from whence they come, which permits the expansion of pre-existing non-conforming uses. Yes, it does. Okay. So since you have such a bylaw, there is, I take it, an obligation for the town not to be arbitrary and capricious in denying such expansions? Uh, absolutely. And the, well, that's the standard of judicial review, as you know. It, when the board finds that it, it's, there's a 25 percent, that it can go up to 25 percent, and it must not be substantially more detrimental, which is language that comes right from 40A Section 6. In applying, the, but Section 284 also says that when you apply 
the extensions, you also have to go to the special permitting section under section 934, and I may have that wrong. But 923. Thank okay. you. 933. 923. 923, and there are criteria for special permits, and they are density, traffic, and these are the issues they have to look at in determining substantially whether or not the extension is substantially more detrimental. Now, as this court knows, there's a long history of case law with respect to what a court may do, de novo, judicial review of a zoning decision of a local board. The judge hears the um, facts de novo, makes his own findings of facts without regard to what the board did, and then decides whether or not there is any basis, rational basis, for which the board could find or justify the denial. Our argument before the appeals court was that the land court completely disregarded that standard because what he did was he substituted his decision, his evaluation of the facts for what the board what the board found with respect to density and with respect to traffic because as you know with respect to traffic any increase like the judge found that there wouldn't be much of an impact well 75 cars might not be much of an impact but it is an impact well the, the, the 75 cars is it is that the total cars coming from the the, the, the mobile home park? Yes, it is. So, so but it's, isn't it an increase of 15? No. Well, what they, I, I no, can't. 75, 75. Car trips per, car trips day, per day generated okay. by I, okay. the additional 15 <clears throat> units. I get, they use the ITE trip manual, which has uses, and if you add this many units, they anticipate there would be 75 additional trips. The judge actually found, it's 55 and older, he actually equated it with senior housing, which as you get closer to 55, it doesn't seem like senior housing to me, but there is a mobile home use because they're limited in size. And he said there would be only 60 trips in and out on Clark Road. Um, he disagreed with that. He thought it was because it's over 55, he said senior housing. But there are, there are cases that specifically say, even if it's a minimal impact, it's the local board's evaluation of what can, that can handle, not the judge's <coughs> evaluation of what the additional traffic means to the town. And that just because he disagrees doesn't mean that they were irrational in their belief. That's the case law on with respect to the traffic. As to the density, density, as with traffic, is always a zoning purpose. If you go to the zoning purposes in the Shirley Bylaw 1.2, the purposes of zoning are to prevent overcrowding of land, to allow light and air between living structures, etc. cetera, um, it, quality of life issues. So density is very real. You have 65 units on 20 acres. It is, it is very dense. There is evidence with respect to the Board of Health Rules and Regulations, which we, I think we covered in the brief um, very carefully, with respect to the way the original park was built does not meet the current regulations with respect to 50-foot separation, even though the new would meet that separation. So how does that, I mean, I, I was looking at that and I was trying to figure out why is that relevant when what it, we're really talking about is it's not. The, the expansion I'm sorry, um, Justice Cordy. It's not relevant. Okay. It's a different regulatory scheme. Licensing, Board of Health, licensing for water and sewer, for sanitary code issues, um, licensing for alcohol or fuel and zoning all have separate purposes. The fact that this meets the Board of Health regulations is information but it doesn't bind to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Their density issue is what is density for purposes of the zoning bylaw. And yes, mobile homes are not regulated other than 4.4, which I referenced. And what the appeals court said is in, Car in Cox versus Carver, they took from, which, which as, as you know, Rockwood Inn said, the extension of structures, non-conforming structures, must meet the current zoning. And Cox said non-conforming uses also must meet 
the extension of nonconforming uses must also meet the current zoning regulations. And what the court said is, well, the current zoning regulations in the R3 district and the RR, which are the underlying zoning districts, well, that's what we have. That's what we have for density to determine density, and that's what they applied. And, it, and they started off by saying, well, it doesn't meet the frontage and it doesn't meet the setbacks, but it also didn't meet the area that's supposed to be devoted to a single family home, which is essentially what a mobile home is. So that it, even though Cox is a little bit different factually, it, it's a very sound legal premise. If you're expanding a nonconforming use, you must meet the current zoning. But that's, that, even that's, if the current, I'm sorry. But Cox, two, two differences it seems to me. One, Cox had and the decision was based on the, it had an existing set of regulations within the zoning bylaw for mobile home parks. In, in not in the specific district that the, that mobile home park, they were allowed in a different district. They, they were they, about there. About 100 acres had to have 100, 100 acres. acres, but the district, uh, it's not clear why that mobile home is non-conforming, but it is rather, cl it's clear that the, the, um, it's the, no longer allowed in the district in which that mobile home was located, so they applied the regs from the other district. Right. So one is they had some existing regs yes, that they yes. applied, but, but for, the, for the kind of use that was going to be operating. Correct. And two, um, it seems to me it's significant that it was talking about a piece of property that was not part of the original nonconforming use, right? And it was across the street from it. Yes. It, um, what they did was they had, they were adding on, they actually were more expanding onto land because what you're, what you're not, you're only, not only expanding the use, but you're actually expanding the land devoted right. to that. Which use. is not so in this case. Not in that, this case. That, well, except to the extent that the current mobile home park is located in the R3 district. The lot, if you look at page 387, has a copy of the plan and the facts. The residential rural district line actually runs through it. But, in in the, the original park was confined to the R3 district. And if there's any similarity, it's because it will go over into a brand new district. There's not new land, but you are going into another district. It, it, I, I would be speculating by saying when they originally established the mobile home, they were limited in the R3, and that's why everything's over here, and they didn't use that land. Yeah. So, so but that's, it, it that's looks, speculation. It, it, um, uh, it looks like the, the land is in uh, two different zone districts. One of the zones is almost two-acre lots. Correct. And the other one is a third-acre lot. Uh, the yes. 15th, almost the R3, third. yes. Yeah. Uh, taking out considerations of the pond, how many single-family homes legally could be built on 20 acres uh, it, I, with the same kind I didn't of zoning know I'd have configuration? To do math. Um, 20 acres. Uh, on 15, this, in, using this using configuration. The, using the zoning, it's yeah. only. How, how many how many single-family homes could be built on this tract of land? Using the RR district, yeah, with the, using with the, the, the way it is. Part of it is in RR. Feet. Part of it is in R three. Oh wow! What are we like? Sixteen? Is that what? A total of sixteen. I'm, I'm not sure. You're asking me to do. But didn't they talk about the this math? At, didn't they <laughs> talk about this at, in, in the and uh, when considering they, issues of density? No. What they look what they were looking at was the 65 units on the 20 acres. But all, if you look at the map, you'll see they're all really congested in a couple of areas. And then where the pond is, there's an open area. It seems as though they were constructed very tightly together. So they didn't, it, it's, I mean, density, I mean, they, what they saw was a very dense um, development in the midst of a residential development. And they, in the 15, even 15 more, regardless They have of, planned unit developments in Shirley? Where you can, you can cluster or cluster development where you I can. I don't. I don't believe so. A planned unit. I don't believe they have PUDs in Shirley. I would have to check the zoning bylaw. Now, as to density, your sister says, well, by by the, with the bylaw allowing there to be up to 25 percent expansion, <laughs> that you can't 
claim to deny it on the basis of density as long as it fits within that parameter? We, um, the interpretation of the zoning bylaw that the zoning board applied was that, that that was the limit of the expansion, but you still had to meet the requirements that it be not substantially more detrimental, and you still had to meet section nine, which requires you to look at density. I mean, there, there's an inconsistent, if, if you read it that the way you're proposing, it, there seems to be an inconsistency in the zoning bylaw then, that um, okay, you can expand as of right for 25, up to 25%, but then you, they can't consider density no, under I mean, Section it really 9. No, it would seem to me that if the, if the facts had been different and you had, uh, you were expanding with the uh, same way, but everybody was going to have 13 school age children. I mean, all the concerns that get mentioned, but at least Judge Long felt weren't really proved, you could still those would be rational reasons. But I mean, then they the, wouldn't be uh, arbitrary reasons. But then the other sections, which specifically talk about traffic and density, would be meaningless. And as you know, the law is you're supposed to, we're supposed to read the zoning bylaw. It says the procedures. As, the as procedures a whole. used in section 9.2.4. I'm not sure what that means, as opposed to the standards of 2.9.2. Well, the, the zoning board, when they say when it says the procedures of 923, I'm sorry, 923 that they, they do actually apply those criteria. That's the, their interpretation is that they do apply that criteria. And the court never, the, neither the appeals court nor the land court said, oh, it's just a procedure and it's not the criteria. So that's, uh, this is a new argument. The, no, the land court mentioned it, I think. But, but, but that's then not, but on, he actually, but then, went on. Yes, but then he went on to actually decide yes. on the criteria. So the, the in, my time is running out. So what, what I, we would say is that what we would ask this court to do is um, affirm the appeals court's overruling of the land court with respect to the longstanding law with respect to de novo judicial review of local zoning decisions. <coughs> Unless there are any other questions, thank you. Thank you.